Okay, boys and girls, we're going to make this short and sweet. Because you like short and sweet. Because everybody these days has the attention span of a rabbit. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, I know this is a reflector and not a photo site on a sensor, right? So bear with me. You know, there's millions of little eyeballs. This is a Fuji sensor. Actually, there are 24 million eyeballs on this sensor. There we go. Yeah, drop it, why don't you, right? This is actually a six-inch reflector from a mirror. But let's just imagine this is a photoreceptor. Okay, there's a lot of misnomers. What do larger eyeballs... See, larger sensors don't gather more light. They don't, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Exposure is per unit area, not per total area, right? Like if you walk in from the state of Rhode Island, which is really small, to the state of... Uh, Pennsylvania, it's a lot larger. More light doesn't fall on your head, does it? I'm going to shine this right now into the camera, see what it does. <laughs> larger sensors don't gather more light. Now let's talk about the photo sites, the gigantic eyeballs. Okay, clipping. Let's first talk about dynamic range. Okay, dynamic range, right? Now, imagine, um, let's just say this is a photo site on a DX sensor, right? Except this is a piece of glass, this circle right here. And this is a photo site on the Fujifilm GFX, or the Pentax Z, or the Mamiya Leaf, or the, uh, the Phase 1, which is insanely expensive, right? So, where does dynamic range come? All dynamic range comes from the bigger area. Imagine like a kiddie pool as opposed to like a bucket okay sensors are not like buckets this is a mistake all these idiots on youtube have made like a bigger sensor gathers more light they're like a bucket of water out in the rainstorm no 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 you idiot not you those people yeah some really famous youtubers have said that stupid garbage and it's not true the photo sites however are like buckets but they you know light is Anybody, I, anybody uses the word photon, I'm going to smack you, okay? Light is electrical circuit. It does, there's no such thing as a photon particle. That's an arbitrary abstraction created by dumbasses in atomistic modern science. Anyway, borrowing that, all dynamic range comes from the fact that the micro contrast is better on this than it is on this. Okay, imagine the same rainstorm. A bucket versus this versus this, right? There's two inches of rain during the rainstorm, right? Right, so which one has more water in it? This one does. Well, if you stick a measuring stick in this, imagine these were both buckets, right? Stick a measuring stick in this, it's got two inches of water in it, right? This also has two inches of water in it, but the total amount of water in this huge sucker is a lot more than here, right? That means it has better SNR, signal to noise ratio it has better gain it has better micro contrast too see micro contrast you know this is a telescope mirror by the way you know how we're able to see really faint distant stars by using huge ass telescopes yeah that means per given aperture of time a temporal aperture or shutter speed in our case we're able to gather more light or better gain over a period of time so dynamic range and micro contrast comes from Big old eyeballs on your. This is why, generally speaking, full frame sensors have better. Not well, they do, of course, have better dynamic range, and they also have better shadow detail. The uh, amount of low light, low light detail, by the way, is no different than micro contrast. Micro contrast are low gain signals. Those are the intertonal details that give true 3D pop and definition to your shot. This is also why you always want to do ETTR, exposed to the right. In other words, push your sensor to the limit of saturation, which is what a light meter is incredibly important for, for studio work, by the way. The bigger area on this, as opposed to this, for example, gives you better SNR, signal-to-noise ratio, or more charge, more electrical charge per unit of time, right? Per unit of time or per aperture of time, a temporal aperture, i.e. a shutter speed, you have better signal-to-noise ratio. You actually have more charge per unit of time. You do, right? Same thing with the telescope, right? Now photography is getting simple. 
A bigger area here as opposed to here. Not only equals better dynamic range, better SNR, but we have a higher capacitance. This is where you need to pay attention. We have a higher capacitance before it gets overfilled. Let's say that this is three inches tall, right? Yeah? Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Which one over a period of time will fill up quicker? before it becomes oversaturated, which is where the better dynamic range comes from. Yeah. Per unit or aperture of time, we're actually able to collect more without overcharging. A larger area is less prone to overcharging. And when you're less prone to overcharging, okay, then you have better dynamic range which means it increases not only the uh, signal-to-noise ratio you get in shadow detail, but also the clipping point you have in your highlights. See, we have mid-tones here, shadows here, speculars or highlights over here. Right? Seems kind of simple, doesn't it? Kind of like the thicker uh, the steel is, the more it can withstand out on the battlefield. Of course, they actually use not steel, they use depleted uranium or DU. But the thicker DU plating, depleted uranium, is able to have better dispersion and better capturability of a certain charge, in this case it would be an incoming round, but I'm trying to use all these various analogies. Imagine like a, a catcher on the baseball field, and he has like a, a catching mitt that uh, <laughs> is not only twice as thick, but five times as big. He's generally going to not only catch more, <clears throat> improve dynamic range, but he's going to actually feel less. Imagine oversaturation as the difference between catching a fastball in your hands as opposed to catching a fastball in the glove. Let's say oversaturation is catching a fastball by hand. It's like, ow, crap, you just broke my hand. Catching in a catcher's glove made out of cowhide, not a problem. So we have more imperviousness to overcharging on this than we do on something like this. I mean, pretty simple, right? This is where better dynamic range comes from. Gigantic eyeballs on bigger sensors. And when you get to medium format, oh, damn. <laughs> this is the reason. This is also, too, the stupidity people make. They're like, I get so sick of this. This is what people don't understand. They say, well, you know, the GFX sensor is not really that much bigger than a 35 millimeter. It doesn't go up by area. It goes up exponentially. When it comes to uh, charge, and uh, if the pixel pitch remains the same, which it doesn't, it actually increases. It does not, if a sensor is twice as large, which the GFX sensor is not twice as large, it's like, what, 38% bigger than a full frame sensor? It's exponentially better. Exponentially better on dynamic range and SNR. That's what people don't realize. It doesn't go up additively. It goes up a multiplicative. It's the same thing when it comes to wood flooring. It's like, well, a one-inch wood floor will hold 10,000 pounds. So a two-inch wood floor should hold uh, uh, 20,000 pounds. It should hold twice as much. No, it goes up exponentially. So if a one-inch wood floor, hardwood will hold 10,000 pounds per uh, 10, by f 10 foot by 10 foot unit of area. Uh, a 2 inch wood flooring will hold 20,000 pounds per same unit of area. No, it goes up exponentially. It's not 20,000, it's like 45 or something like that. It goes up a lot more. The same is true in image sensors. People don't realize that. They got what, a GFX sensor? It's not that much bigger than a full frame sensor. It is actually a lot bigger. Uh, but I get their point. They're, they're like, well, it's not as big as a phase one sensor, so how much better could it be? Well, it's a lot better. <laughs> it's a lot better. A lot. Not a little bit. A lot. Because it's not additively. It's like, well, it's it's 1.63 times whatever bigger than a full frame. No, it doesn't mean it's 1.63, but it's exponentially better. People don't get it. I just broke this sensor. The cover glass just broke. That's all right. Screw it. Who cares? Anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. Tell me to jump off cliff. Whatever makes you happy, girlfriend.
<clears throat> I'm hopped up on caffeine, not alcohol. I don't do drugs and I don't drink. But I am exhausted. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Bye.